All right, you guys. Because I'm long-winded and I talk a lot, as well you know. Sorry, it's just me. Um, I had to break the soundproofing video into two parts. Uh, the first part was the interior cabin. Uh, the second part is drilling down on the trunk as well as the door. So I just wanted to make a little intro for that. Uh, again, this is the 2003 Honda Civic Coupe EM2 uh, EX um, soundproofing video. So again, part two. All right, enough for my intro. On to the main event. Let me pivot to the door because my second box of Amazon Basics hadn't arrived yet, but I wanted to go ahead and see if I couldn't get the car ready so worst case I can get the door in because like I said, it's just the uh, that bit of flooring back there. I want to try and get the car together as much as possible. So the remaining sheets that I had left, I should have pivoted sooner, but anyway. I've got them down in the door here. You can see I've got it pushed as far forward as I can get. It was a booger to roll. Uh, same for in there. And then I got it there. You can kind of see it's up on this, this edge here that goes up and then down in there. And what I found was, let's look through this panel here. We've got this bar that runs here and there. So it divides the door into three sections. If you cut the sheet to fit within those bars, you end up with these two leftover pieces, the one on top and the one on bottom, and it works perfect for that lower third to run them together, as well as the little short one works well. See, so you can stick it on the sill. So that's how I did the other door. There you can kind of see. Rotating up. Up there. You'll probably got a better view than what I got. Because uh, I can't get my head in the door. Anyway, you can see this is the, uh, the trim ring I got off Amazon for the car to convert it to run a regular speaker. But I did want to show y'all how I did the internal part of the door. Um, as soon as that Amazon Basics box gets here, it's supposed to be here tonight, um, I can finish the rest of the door. Worst case, I do have the, uh, the stylus over there, or Silas, no T, Silas. Um, I got it because it's black, and the trunk, when I got my deck lid from the junkyard, because remember mine had hail damage. Um, somebody had already done that with the Tsunami, but it's kind of an eyesore being silver like that when you open the trunk. So I intentionally opted for the Silas so that I could cover this and make it at least black. So that was the plan there. So I'll predominantly use the Silas in the trunk. So worst case of Amazon Basics isn't going to make it in time for me to go back to work on Tuesday. I'll fill it in with the Silas and save the Amazon Basics for the view. Well, soundproofing the trunk. This is what I've decided to do. I want to go ahead and do this first with the hopes that the rest of my Amazon Basics will come in time to do the door. I debated about putting the carpet back together, and then I was like, no, I'm going to go ahead and keep on pushing through. Sorry it's dark. I had to close the door. I was not going to stand in the sun. Not happening. No siree, Bob. And I didn't think y'all wanted to watch the boring disassembly of the trunk. But overview, obviously, spare tire. Easy peasy. Everybody knows how to do that. Um, to pull the carpeting out on the bottom, you've got two little push pins that are up there that you have to pop loose and then you can pull the trunk carpeting out. Uh, this plastic panel that's here, it's held in by metal clips, two on each side. I pulled the weather stripping because I had never pulled one of those before so I wanted to be sure I didn't tear the weather stripping in the process. 
um, to get the side carpet out. You're going to pull this little guy that's got the uh, screw head on it that unscrews, comes out, and then you've got these little guys, like all standard push pins. Um, then down in this area, there's going to be a regular push pin Christmas, oops, Christmas tree little jobby guy. Oi, sorry, my lighting. Okay. And then in the case of my car, it was set up for a cargo net, so you have to unscrew that and it'll be mimicked identically on the other side. Um, and then I vacuumed it. I'm still vacuuming out glass. And here's all the carnage from what was inside the car. <laughs> Not the vacuum. Uh, oh, I, yeah, I converted one of those to fit in there. Instead of putting the uh, uh, tire jack underneath quieter, less vibration. Anyhow, so this is what we're starting with. I'm going to clean it with the uh, degreaser, and then I'm going to put my uh, first layer of the Silas down, the black. It's 80 mil, um, and start doing the, the trunk. And Obviously, it's the same as the interior. I'll check back in with you when I have it uh, at a decent state. Uh, but what I will show you is, remember on the interior I said I was going down behind uh, that that little cubby thingy that's up there, that whatever, anyhow. And I was putting the soundproofing into the uh, fender well. There you can see the edge of my soundproofing. So this is going to come out nicely. I'll be able to soundproof this entire wall. And the other side you can't see as well because we have the... Uh, Apologies, I was looking. We've got the gas filler door, so that's going to make it a little bit more difficult. But um, I did the same thing, bringing it back in there. So I'll see how far I can reach up in there. If I can't, um, then that will be liquid spray time. Um, I've already been in here to change out the uh, fuel door and trunk cable in the past because mine failed. If you ever have an issue with it failing... See that little, all right, let me put the light, and then that little barrel right there, you twist it out, and that door will pop open. In the future, I'll do a video on that, because, oh, I was stressing at the gas station, dudes. You just don't even know. Uh, when that failed, and I couldn't get gas, and I was about out of gas, and I didn't know what the hell I was going to do, and this was my only car. Like, how the heck do I get to work? How do I call them and tell them, dude, I'm out of gas and I can't put more in the car because fuel door. Anyhow. So, I'll check back in with you guys later. Alright, back again. I opted to do the trunk because the Amazon Basics box never showed up for me to finish the door. Uh, what I did is I layered the whole trunk in this Silas, this black, because the previous owner had put on this deck lid the silver and it looked crappy. Not that the black looks beautiful, but anyway, it's all uniform and kind of blends with the deck lid, so that's why I opted for the black. Anyway, I did the trunk. I did up in the wells as far as I could reach. Um, I went back in the corner, up in there, on both sides. As you can see, it's up under that acoustic mat. And I met it, well, there you can see it better. It meets back up with the area that I did from in the cabin. So I did these whole areas much better much denser sound now it doesn't not as tinny now as i said the whole matting the whole matting i did the matting in the whole floor and it's very tarry the silas it's not like the kill mat everybody said that they were similar but you can see it's it's like runny goo almost if it gets too warm and it's was 90 yesterday when i was working on it high 80s low 90s 
and it was just melting everywhere. It was awful. It got all over my clothes and everything else, but it's a little bit cooler this morning because the sun isn't beating in the garage and it's firmed up a little bit, but I'm still not really happy with it as a product. I'd say stick with Kill Matte, but the Amazon Basics right now is definitely the way to go. Um, if I could just get it to come here. You can see where I had rolled the Kill Matte from the inside and then I butted all the black up to it. Now this silver that you're seeing is actually ducting from Home Depot, duct Hang on. There we go. Frost King duct insulation. I ran out of this ag sound sound matting that I did in the interior. It didn't go as far as I thought or I overused it. I don't know. So I laid this down where the spare tire is because I get a lot of vibration from the tire clanging. So that'll take care of that. Um, and just used the end of the roll that I had. I don't think I'll do... I may throw a little bit here and a little bit there but for the most part I use the uh, that closed cell foam in the fender wells to keep the sound down and where the tires are now the only other thing I have to do is go back and add a little bit more butyl in these areas because they are it's helped but they're very much different you know so I want to add a little bit there to help with any vibrations. And then those crossbars right there have not been done. And then I'll be putting the trunk back together. So yay. Um, anyway, just wanted to do a quick update to patch in. All right. And again, yay, it's black. Okay. Here's where I am now. All the acoustical matting is the black. The shiny black. is the regular soundproofing. This silver is also kind of the acoustical closed cell foam to help deaden everything. So I went and got some of my real thin soundproofing and kind of went around the upper area not too heavy because I did the other side from the inside, but every little bit helps when this is where the base is going to be. So, but time to start putting this trunk back together. I didn't do anything additional to this. It's plenty. As it was, it didn't seem to vibrate. So. And down here, see I added a little bit in there, so that should all help with the, the resonance from the exhaust in the cabin. But that is the extent of what I'm doing in the trunk. All right, after we last spoke, I have finished up the door. Finally, Amazon pulled their head out of their tail and delivered my second box. So I got to finish out the door and uh, I've got it all on the inside here. And I just threw leftover pieces up in there. But you see I did this lower area. I went down there without covering up any of the drain holes and then I went inside up as far as I could it looks like I need to push that down a little bit it gets hard to get up in there with the tools um, and slid them back as far as I could down into the door That one little spot, it was that's right where the main drainage is, and it's just such a small piece. I was like, forget it. I wasn't going to cut up a whole nother piece for that. Chances are it would fall off and block the drains anyway. Let's see, we've got it all up in there. 
and I did a little bit more around the, uh, the speaker since it was only that real thin stuff that I had at the time. Made sure to keep all the access holes. Couldn't remember which one of these were pins or vents. I, I don't know why so many holes are in these doors if it's for mounting various accessories or what, but I figured can't hurt to just cut around them. Takes a little longer, but so that is where we are now. I've got to put that bad boy back on, and all this stuff was just hard and yeah, there was no way I was going to be able to reuse it to reattach this. That's why so many of these things get left off. Uh, hang on, let me open my little container here. I can't remember if I mentioned this stuff before, but it's like uh, butyl. I think this is actually legitimate butyl for working with windows, you know, resealing things around windows. I know we used to use them on the Camaros and Firebirds when we were reattaching the, uh, the deck lid and the glass and everything together. That was one of the things we'd use. This is the legitimate stuff. Um, this is what they use uh, in the airline industry. Um, at least a friend of mine had given me some. They call it Dum Dum, and it's basically almost like a clay. And so I'm going to put all that on the door in the places where the plastic needs to adhere. And this stuff is nice because it stays like it doesn't dry out hard typically. It stays gooey. Um, they even use it, uh, there's forms of it that you can stick like paper posters on walls. I think kids used to do that in college. Um, instead of using thumbtacks so that they wouldn't get hit with uh, damage fees. So they sell stuff like that. So you can always use, probably get the cheaper generic stuff that way. Uh, if you wanted to do the same thing, but I'm going to go ahead and start layering some of this on and then I'll check back in with you to show you because I'm going to need two hands to do this. All right, so I've kind of taken it and rolled it out into a little snake. I've used the uh, push pin just to kind of hang it and use it as a guide. Let's see, basically I'm putting it back where the original was and I'm just going to go around and trace it all the way around and you just once you get it up there you just kind of press it press it on there the more I get the better it'll hold since this is plastic you know but you see it it's got mild adhesion but once it's all together it'll hold quite well so I'm gonna work on that and I'll show you guys the uh, finished result as I'm buttoning it up okie dokie you see, I got it put around the areas where the factory stuff was. Um, this area was still rubbery, but it wasn't rubbery enough to hold on its own. Now, the factory also has these little plugs. You see that one that I put in over there and here, and that'll hold it in place. And then you're just going to go around and make sure you've got all your, there it is, everything coming through the plastic like it's supposed to before you go mushing it down. But this stuff is the same stuff that I used in the uh, airbag video where I was replacing my seats and putting seats in from an LX model that didn't have the uh, side curtain airbags. So I was having to get at some bolts that were in an awkward location and I used this stuff to hold the tool and the fastener together while I was reaching into an awkward location. So it works great for that. So it's always good to have some around. That's why I have the little tins of it, because I just never know what's going to be a good application. But that's basically how you do it. I need to 
iron that out a little bit stretch and twist because I was doing it one-handed but that gives you the basic idea of that portion of it all right all right I went back and used the roller to kind of mush everything down and get it to adhere so this plastic stretched a little bit when I was pulling it loose didn't come off as nice as the other side. Um, anyway, so with that part wrapped, I'll show you all the door panel. All right. All this is uh, the speaker box carpet. I went through and just basically covered the bulk of the area. Kind of the same principle as the, uh, this is where the previous little foams already were so that's why that looks loose again here so it's it's the foam itself underneath flexing so you can see a bit of it peeking out anyway um the whole idea is to dampen the plastic the same way you're dampening the uh the metal on the body of the car so i did all that and when you put it together you get a nice solid close instead of all the rattling and banging so I'll go ahead and put that guy together but the body anyway compared to this and that's more what we're looking for and this is where I couldn't do because that's all where all the mechanicals are there you hear. <laughs> Mirror rattles slightly. But that's what it normally sounds like. So that's your best representation. That's how your doors normally sound. And that's how they sound with the soundproofing. So, again, it doesn't make it the uh, perfect sound block. It's not what it's designed to do. It's just to dampen your vibrations so that you don't get nearly as much rattles and ambient noises traveling through. Let's see. This door without the door panel on it. Let's see. Even without the door panel. And again, that hollows out. But much, much better than that or this. So, anyway, it's definitely worth it. Expensive-ish uh, for me. It doesn't, uh, it's not too much because of the value you get in your enjoyment when driving the car around. You don't have all the... Uh, extra noises from the outside especially if you decide to do a louder exhaust and you don't want the drone in the cabin as much yes you can put a resonator on it and everything but this also helps so all right you guys that pretty much wraps the soundproofing video